Hi there, loving your Volkswagen. So tell us, what have you got? I have a 1960 um, single cab, first generation of the VW trucks. It's, it's all original, okay? And it's certified with a certificate from the manufacturer from Germany. Wow. Um, um, all original, has it been restored back to yes, original? Yes, I did. Yes, I fully restored it back to original. Okay. Um, and we kept even even the, the same interior. It's not modified. I had one of these. was the first car that I learned how to drive on when I was nine years old in Hampton Bays, Long Island. Well, there you go. So you've just answered my next question because I was going to ask you why the Volkswagen pickup for you. Yes, it's because it's the first truck I learned how to drive on. Yep. And we, we used it as a working truck in the Hamptons. Nice. And um, how, when did you come across this? I came across it about eight years ago because I wanted my first vehicle that I learned how to drive on. So I searched it and it came out of uh, Las Vegas, brought it to my restorer and four years in restoration. And here's the version. And it's a multiple award winner. It won Ocean Reef and it wrote uh, one Lake Mira. Okay, well, we're going to go class. in and have a look in detail in a minute. But before we do that, tell us what was it like? Where does it take you when you sit back and you start driving this around? Takes it, you back to what you yes, were, what, 15, was, 16? I was, I was nine when I learned how to drive. You were nine. Nine years old, yes. <laughs> and we had a marina on the bay, Shinnecock Bay in Long Island. And I learned how to drive. We would throw the gas tanks in there to fill fuel, garbage. So we, we had to go up a hill. And what was challenging is to put it in first gear and go up the hill. Of course. So I learned how to do all that and it just brings back the memories of my youth. So that's wow. why... Youth, this, childhood more like it. You were yes, nine years old. I was a baby. Goodness me. But we worked earlier in those days. Yes, of course. <laughs> and that was in the uh, early 70s. <laughs> Absolutely loving the color in this. And it's very different to the other pickups that were happening at that time. Yes, it especially is. Especially the ones in America. If you look, I mean, it was multifaceted. Okay, this could be also become a flatbed, which you just open the sides and all four sides can open. And it just gives it such a different look. Right, and it's a front cab, and also there's a lot of storage. As you can see from the original pictures in the brochure, that was an original brochure which I made a collage of. I mean, it was multifaceted back in the early 60s. Now, it's got a flat front. Yes. The, and it's a long bed. Where is the engine? The engine's in the rear. It's in the rear. Okay, right let's here. have a look. Like all the, all the um, transporter buses. It's right there. There it is. So this is the same frame as the 24 window, the, the valuable um, vehicles also, which were the, um, not the service ones, the recreational ones. It was a big pickup. It's a pretty big bed. Yeah, it's a long bed. They made it also with a double cab, but this is called a single cab. So they made two variations of it, both double and single cab. And my understanding is a double would have a back seat? Yes, it would have two doors. It would have two doors, but then the bed would be shorter. The bed would be shorter. Right. Okay. So this is more utilitarian. All right, let's have a look inside here. Inside, yep. Very simple in those days. Four speed. As you see, the air conditioning is the front windows. So they would get ventilation, open the front windows, and it would go right through to the back. Love it. So vintage. And you had the radio on, which I annoyingly asked you to turn no, it off. No, but it's, that's a vintage radio <laughs> that matches the car. It's a vintage radio from the 60s. Yep. Look at that, everyone. Yes, it is. You've done a great job in Thank restoring you. this. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely did, Gino. Now, how long have you been coming to Wheels Across the Pond? This is my fifth year. Okay, so you yeah. like it. And I also have another car, which I didn't bring this year. That's an amphibious car, an Alpha car. Okay. So that'll be next year. So I'll see you next year also. You, you definitely will. Did you bring that amphibious car last year? Last year, yes. Is it, it blue? It, it's blue. Yes, okay. and it won. <laughs> and it won. I did hear about that. Yes. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll be able to catch it, but it's not here at this show. Next year, we'll, we'll bring it back. And, what, and if it, it gets a little hot, we might just swim it in the lake there. I would have loved to see that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're Gino. welcome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.
Okay, I'm absolutely loving this, everybody. 1970s camper van. This is so cool. Absolutely love it. We have not seen a camper on the channel, especially one in detail. So I want to know so much more about these. The Volkswagen, of course, from the 70s. Carlos, how are you today? Good, good. How are you? Good. I love your setup. Thank you. You've got to sit right in the correct period. 1970s all the way. 1970. I actually got it from California. Okay. Um, ever since I retired five years ago, that's what I kind of dedicated my spare time for buying vintage Volkswagens, trying to find them. This was in California and the original owner, he had it for, I don't know how long he had it, but the, the person that I bought it for had it for eight years and he did not want to deal over the internet or phone calls or anything. Fair enough. <laughs> so I had to take a flight, go to San Francisco, rented a car, went to Sacramento, saw it, bought it. From there on, I got my rental car, went to Chico, California, visited some friends and I had it shipped to my house. Uh, one year ago, so uh, I uh, we brought it down. I we stripped it, cut out all the rust, you know, just just a little bit. This one, since it's a California bus, it was kind of rust free. Basically. Okay, because of the weather. Exactly, but it, it was in great shape. Um, I put off terrain tires because most of the new generation they like to have the buses low. Mm -hmm. I don't like them low because I like to go on the beach or you know anywhere I can go with it. And, and you wanted to keep that vintage look the way course, it was. Of course. So uh, basically the the whole interior, the top that's all original from 1970. The the back seat that falls into a bed of course. And there's a child cod right up there. They have a bundle up. That's where you put your kids. That's where you would put yep, your kids. Yep. <laughs> that falls over and there's another cod that goes here in the front seat also. So how would they climb up there? Uh, you, you push them up. <laughs> Either way, they can just step on, on the bench itself and, yep. and, and climb up there. So, so I basically did, um, since the seats were original materials, I left them like that. They are uh, nice. The original owner did, um, he did the floor, that's not original, but it's, you know, it kind of goes with the, you know, with the theme. Yep. And what have we got here, just storage? Uh, yeah, you can open, just push the button and it should pop right out with just Look at that. It's a fair bit of room yeah. in there. Oh yes, there's more storage there's down more there. There's more storage down there. Originally in here there's a sink and an ice box. Okay. But it takes too much too much space. But in, in 1970 you would have had a sink. Exactly. And I, I got know. it when I bought the bus. But but I took it off because they just take too much space because mm -hmm. they come up almost all up to here. Okay. And, and I then don't you have to squeeze in. Need, exactly. So I just carry my cooler put in there and and, and, and that's fine. Now Carlos, you went through a lot of effort to go all the way to California, rent a car, yes. and go out and get this. And even though, you know, the man didn't want to give it at first right. through the internet, right. a lot of other people would have been like, okay, I'm just going to keep looking. Right. First question, why this particular car? Um, I've had five, five West Hollies, yep. and I was in the market for another one. Why and, the Volkswagens? Um, I've had Volkswagens all my life. Why? I, I probably had, um, well, my brother actually, I had an older brother, he was six years older, so he started, he brought me into the scene okay. when I was very little. And all my cousins back in Puerto Rico, they all had Volkswagens. They all have Volkswagens. So I got it. I got the bug. You, know, you got the bug. That's, that's, that's what it is. I got the bug and I kept searching and searching and then you know, finally and I just go from another one and another one. So so this is kind of like a hobby of mine now. Yeah. So I just keep them, redo them until somebody offers me crazy money for it. I let it go and just buy another and one. And get another and, one. And just keep going. Why not? I mean, they're such a unique car. Yeah, yeah. They're so unique on the inside. What I actually like, um, I collect a lot of stickers. I collect a lot of stickers when I go. So it's kind of funny because when you're part, when you're in a traffic <laughs> light, you can see the people's reaction in the back because they start, yep. they start reading all your, all your stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> got back from the keys with it too so i i drive it oh anywhere. they would have loved it down oh, yeah. at the key oh, yeah, yeah. the key lager just a little hot but you know yep. but as long as you're moving but we completely did the whole motor it has a brand new motor so okay. i drive it is is it's very um functional and so what motor did you put in this that now? has a 1641 but i made it look as authentic as possible i didn't want to do car 
carburetors, any one aftermarket air cleaner. So I, I left it as original as possible. And was it easy for you to restore this, oh. getting the parts and oh, stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, you can, yes, yes, you can find parts anywhere. Okay. There's a site called the Sandbar, and it's worldwide. And actually, they have a lot of cars from Australia there. The Sandbar. The Sandbar. The Sandbar.com. Oh, the Sandbar. Okay. And um, because I know a lot of Australia, they're into rotary motors. Yes. And they're into Volkswagens also. Yes. They're all right-hand drive. They are. <laughs> I noticed that. Yes, yes. These are all left-hand drives, and yep. And it's like a little passion of mine. So that's awesome. And you went with your other friends who also oh, have yes, got yes. the van. We always we always get together in, in events like this. And, yep. You know, spend a couple hours, smoke some cigars, and just reminisce of the good old days. Good old days, and just have a good time. Exactly. Well, I appreciate this. Thank you no so problem. much. No problem. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm having a fabulous time here checking out all these beautiful classics, so many European classics, and one that I have never seen before is the Morgan. Check this out. Belongs to Eric. How are you today? Very well, thank you. I love your car. I love your classic. Thank you. And it's a classic because obviously it was made in 1966. Yes. But you told me they still make these. Yes, Morgan Factory is still in business. It's still it's in business. It's the oldest British car company that's still owned by British people. That's always nice, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> when things are still in-house. Yeah, now, the 1966 Morgan obviously looks like this. Absolutely beautiful. Very vintage, very classic. What do the modern day ones look like? The body is exactly the same. It's a drop wider because uh, this model has a four-cylinder engine and they make an eight-cylinder too now. So they needed to widen the body a little bit, make it a drop longer. But most people say they look exactly the same. Wow, and this would be a pretty um, expensive car or a very luxurious no, car? Modern. No, it was a, a low-priced car, originally bred for racing. So people would drive it to work during the week, yep. and then on the weekends go to the racetrack. And then to race it on the weekends. Yeah. And then in England in the 1930s, you had to have two ways of fastening your hood. Because okay. in the 1930s when they were racing, the hoods would go flying. So Morgan developed this belt, and it became an iconic part of Morgan's to have the racing belt. It's called a bonnet belt. A bonnet belt. And after the 40s and 50s, they improved the latches. They didn't go flying anymore, but everybody kept the belt because it looks so good. It does look good. Yeah, it's an it... iconic feature <laughs> of the Morgan's. Let's have a look at the roof here. It's very unique. This particular roof I designed myself and had it custom made. Okay. And so I call it a half top. A half top. And um, originally it would have been just like a roadster style with no roof or? Well, it had a roof and I also have a full cover in case it starts raining. Okay. But the full cover, the opening to get in is very small. So, it's a little, so this is a lot easier to get in and out of. <laughs> so it's a very functional modification yes. you have done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And this wow. black here, up, up on the top here in... Um, 2012, I was at an event in uh, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, where 300 Morgans showed up, and this one best in show. Wow! And is that because it's um, you've kept it all original? I kept. Well, when we say original. The thing is, Morgan was a small company, and they just did whatever you wanted. Yeah. Like, the steering wheel, they, uh, you know, they changed the steering wheel for me. They changed the color of the wood for me. Um, and this color, the body, my wife actually had a pocketbook this color. Oh, nice. No. painted the color to match her pocketbook. It's almost a camel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's brilliant. I'm liking this Morgan company because it's like getting a custom car exactly. out of the factory. And it's all handmade. It's a handmade car. And it's all handmade. All steel? No, wood. The frame is wood. The frame is wood? Yep. Yeah, let me show you something. Yes, please. Originally in the 1800s, Morgan was a carriage maker. 
Okay. And in the 1900s, what it cost, they just kept the same technology and made wood frame cars. That, that makes sense. So yeah. this would be a Woody in American terms. An original Woody, if you want to say. An original Woody. But come read my sign on the back. <laughs> Did you read that? The sign on the back bumper? Back off or risk splinters? <laughs> <laughs> are these the different groups these and are clubs? These all different clubs that I belong to, Morgan clubs, throughout the world. Throughout the world. Some of them are European, some of them are... This is from the New York Northeast Morgan yeah. Club. This is Washington DC Club. This is South Florida Club. This is England. This is historic because the car's over 50 years old. Oh, Eric, come over here to the front of the um, okay. Morgan, just so we can get away from that speaker as well. How long have you had this for? 18 years. 18 years? Yes. You're in a part of a lot of Morgan clubs. Yes. So why the Morgan for you? When I was 16 years old, I saw a guy driving one. Yep. And I said, that must be the richest guy in the world. <laughs> I said, if I ever made any money, yep. I got to get a Morgan. So of course I graduated college, got married. Then after a few years, I made a little bit of money. I said to my wife, I want to buy a Morgan. She said, what's a Morgan? <laughs> and I explained it to her. And she said, well, we got to redo the kitchen of the house. You can't get a Morgan. So I said, okay. Then a few years later, I accumulated some more money. You know, I like to go buy a Morgan. She said, well, we got to do the bathrooms. <laughs> Not us. Then, a few more years, I accumulated more money. So I'm going to go buy a Morgan. She says, well, we got two kids to put through college. So anyway, for my 60th birthday, my wife came to me and said, I'm buying you the Morgan because I'm sick and tired of listening <laughs> to you. Ask. I said, well, I'm 60. I don't need it already. Get it. She said, no, 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 I'm not going to, if you don't pick it out, I'm going to go pick it out for you guys. And she, for my 60th birthday, bought me this car. She's which, a good lady. You which know. was a white, rusted relic. And I picked it out because it had certain Morgan rare factory accessories on it. Okay. And so that's why I wanted it. And then we restored it. And like I said, my wife had a pocketbook this color. And that's how we picked it. Did you do the restoration yourself? I did everything except the paint job. I took the car all apart. I sent out all the chrome to be re -chromed, And then I put it all back. But the paint job I had done. So were you in England when you were 16? No. No? And this was here in the States all, that you saw it? Yeah. You know, it is one of those cars that as soon as you see it, it, feel, it looks very luxurious and yes. you would think, wow, okay, that is a lot of a money. Lot of people think they cost a lot more than... Well, that's what I thought as well. Yes, yeah. Then well, that's nice. It doesn't cost a lot, but it looks like it does. <laughs> doesn't get better than that. And you're having a good time here at Wheels Across the Pond? I love this show. It's a great show. It is a nice show. It's yes. my first time, so I'm yeah. enjoying it. It's really nice. Well, I appreciate this, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Bye-bye. I always like seeing the vendors at all the car shows, and um, I think by far this is the first that I've come across a storage place for all the collectors. So before Sydney comes back and joins me for my interview, guys, introduce yourselves again. Rafael Garcia, Sales Director for Collection Suites. This is our founder, Juan Manuel Juan Fallen. Manuel Fallen. Uh, we're here uh, in Sydney's great event, Wheels Across the Pond, with Collection Suites. Absolutely love this because, you know, as we were talking, so many people have got classic cars, beautiful cars, yes. and then it becomes a hobby, becomes an addiction, and that grows. That's right. But the space does not grow often with that. Yep, that's <laughs> so exactly right. You guys have got the solution where they can come and keep their classics in storage with you yes. in a great facility of course climate control of course and it's secure as well yes very secure place the climate control with all the finishes ready to go turnkey solution fully automated for you to enjoy your classic car collection and also your man cave multi-use space that you can truly enjoy so they can just have access to it at any time anytime 24, 24 hours. hours anytime 365 yeah wow and these are condominiums that you're selling yes in individual seats that we sell as on-site staff 24-hour security 24-hour no concierge wow yeah. sounds very pricey yeah. well i think it's very worth it it's know? worth it especially yeah. if you've got <laughs> wait, wait. hundreds of thousand dollars under a hood of a classic exactly you need it somewhere now where is the location so our first location is in Doral, Miami. We're actually expanding the Miami location right now. And we're also coming soon to Palm Beach, very close to the airport, very close to the Trump International Golf 
Resort, and we're gonna announce soon when uh, we're gonna open up. Okay, and I'm guessing that you should be going to the West Coast as well. Oh, we're going sure. to we're going to a lot of places. Believe me. Okay. A lot of places. Well, it's very unique, and I like it. Very so. unique. Very unique. 100% you know and especially with people who've got beach homes they don't necessarily have got the biggest land that's correct but they you know, do have collection of classics yeah, yeah, yeah. when sure. you have priceless assets you have to store them in the right place the most secure place yep. in the place that you not only store but you also enjoy yeah um, and yes we uh, everything's climatized far away from the beach so we can stay away from the corrosion hurricane proof you know yeah the works hurricane proof that's right I mean being in Palm Beach everything to protect your collection <laughs> love it thank you so much guys super thank you very much All right, sell the Okay. It's not for sale, is it? <laughs> it is, unfortunately. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful European. Behind me, what's even better is Patricia, is the owner. How's it going, hun? Very good, thank you so much. Beautiful show. It is, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful and just want to make sure. Okay, Patricia, what have you got? I have a 1953 Nash Nashili. Nashili. Now, I had no idea what that was. So for those others who don't know, tell us, what kind of a classic is it? Well, it's designed by Pirinfarina Italian, the engine is made in the US and the suspension is German. So it has the three combinations of the nation. So, so no matter where you are, in what part of the world... I can fit anywhere. You can fit in anywhere. <laughs> anywhere, yes I can. Love it, it's 1953. 1953, they only made 500. They only and made 500. this is the only one in South America. Wow. This guy came from Colombia like a month ago. Wow. And this is my dad. He restored it, and um, here it is now, it's mine. I love it even more, it was your dad and he restored it. So yes. did he have it for the entire lifetime of the car? Yeah, maybe like 40 years. Wow, so that means it's been in your family. It's been in my family for ages. And do you remember this when you were growing up? I have up? pictures. You have pictures? Well, I can't show you right now, but I do have pictures. Me, little one, yep. with the car, like almost like nothing into pieces now. He just, he restored it in his yard, and now this is what it is. Honestly, everybody, like I walk up to a car because I think it's really nice, it's beautiful, it catches my attention. But more importantly, my channel is about finding your bond with the classic. And there you go. You actually grew up in this car. Yes, and you've got photos I grew up of in it. Cars, yeah. Wow, absolutely brilliant. All right, why don't we go and have a look at the car in detail? Why would I even know? You can hold this and you can tell me all about it. Now, when your dad restored it, he restored it back to its original condition? Yes, it, most of the parts are original. Uh, there's some, maybe some little things that we were not able to found in South America, Colombia. Mm -hmm. So he had it made. Um, he also took many, many trips to Philadelphia, to mm -hmm. Nash, uh, to get the pieces that he needed it. And then it's, I actually love it. <laughs> I'm not surprised you love it. That's why I heard someone say that you're trying to sell this car. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, yeah, unfortunately I have to. It's a very beautiful car, but I just can't keep it for myself, you know. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. But it but, is beautiful. Yeah. 1953. It's um, Italian design, but it's got American elements as well. So and German. And German. So in which country would we have seen this more often on the streets? I think in Germany. In Germany. That's where they... Here in the US, they do have a few. Yeah. Uh, but I think mostly in, in Europe. Because and in South America, yes. only one. This one. And how did your dad come across this European He's classic? a collector. He's a collector. Yeah, he has many different cars. That so, explains. Yeah. So he saw it somewhere in a junkyard and he fell in love with it. And he's like, I'm going to fix it, build it. And there it is. It's beautiful. And it's got a soft top as well. Yes. So we could just imagine how it would look like. Oh, it's amazing. What about the engine? So you said it was an American engine? It's an American engine. It's the, the first convertible car in the US made. Can we have a look under the hood? Yeah. It's hard to open it. There it is. It's the original engine. It is original. Yeah, so it's a 1953 engine. Interesting. <laughs> get this zoomed in. <laughs> so it's got all the numbers and the tags yeah, are here yeah. as yeah, well. Of course, yes, it does. Oh, that's brilliant. They made 500, and this is the number 372 of the collection.
And do you like classics in general yourself? I do, I do, I do. I love it. My dad has also four 1928s, 1930s. Yeah. That so many different kinds. My brothers, my entire family is like into cars, so. Well, you're in the right place for wanting to sell it, honestly. <laughs> You've got nothing but classic car lovers here. <laughs> They're beautiful. They really are. All right, well, I appreciate this Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. <laughs> Now, Patrick, your car drew me. Yes. It's definitely very different looking. Yes. It reminds me of the um, a few other cars, a couple others that I have seen, but it's still very different. What exactly do you have? This is the Lotus Mark VI. This is Lotus's first production car. Um, this is the, the 39th version of such. Um, I've owned it for a long time. All the right hands have touched this car. Um, the original owner of it was the author of the history book on Lotus, Form Club Lotus, everything. Also, uh, the engine at the time was built by a little known engine builder by the name of Mike Costa. Mike went on to form a company called Coswood, okay. which you may have heard of. Yeah. But he built the engine for this. Even as, as, as recently as last year, I'm still learning some of the tricks that he put in this engine. Lotus Mark Six. 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 Now, what were these made for? They were made primarily as a sports racer. It could be used for racing, which it was very successful, but it could also be used on the street. The original owner of this took his wife on a little vacation from England into Europe in it, which I, I don't know how she had enough room to pack her stuff, but they did and did well. And it's all steel? No, all aluminum. The whole car weighs a thousand pounds. Yeah, it's got all the aluminum types, of course. That's what makes it very light. That's right. That and the, the chassis design. I mean, everything, everything that Chapman did is very lightweight. Everything does double duty. You don't tell parts that only does one thing if you can make it do two. And when did you come across the car? Night, well, I was aware of it way, way back, but I uh, actually bought it and brought it in from England in 1985. 1885 and 1985. Yeah, it's been a what couple was, weeks ago. <laughs> a couple. What was the state of the car when you got it? Just as you see it. Just as you see it. So it's never been restored. No, this is this is this has been a maintained original, never restored. Wow. That's what makes it so cool. That, that makes it very cool. So. <laughs> it also is probably one of the three best known sixes in the world. And what, and what, what makes you say that? Uh, it's by their registration numbers. If you look at the history books, there are three cars that stand out. This one because the first owner was the author of the books, so he includes the history in the pictures, Pop 444. Uh, the other one was Mr. Colin Chapman's personal car, chassis or registration 1611H. And the other one was an interesting young man who built very fast oh, and, and MGTC Alex engines. Says hello back. Chapman convinced him to put his hot engine into a six. Guy by Peter Gammon. And Gammon was winning everything. So the headlines were Peter Gammon wins again in his MG Lotus. And um, British made? Oh, yes. Where, where else would we have been able to see this classic? What other countries? Only in England? Uh, no, they're, they're all over the world. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm helping a man right now restore a notable six in Australia. Oh. I've been taking it apart, taking photos and measurements and things, and sending them down to him so that he can get an accurate restoration. Oh, okay. And where is our Australian friend based in? What city? Um, hmm. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember which city. That's Sorry. Right. 
Well, we've Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney. Mm. I, I'm, I'm not even going to guess. Brisbane. <laughs> Uh, he sent, he just recently sent me some. I actually so gave him the uh, the bell housing to connect the engine to the transmission that I had extra, which was a Lotus made part. Okay. I had an extra one, so I sent it down from him. Um, yeah, as as that's what we do. We help people. Yes. Well, that's the car culture, isn't it? That's what I'm learning and understanding now. A race car in 1954. What engine does this have? This one has. Easy to describe would be just an MGTC, you know, like the early MG, like 48, 49, yep. 50, TC, 1250 cc's. This one was built by Mike Costin. He bumped it up to 1466 cc's and made it a full race engine. So it's got very close to 100 horsepower. Okay. Now, what have you got in front of us? It's got a couple of instruments. Very large tachometer. This one is the same type that's used on the D-Type Jaguars. This was a late addition after the original owner was getting speeding tickets. <laughs> speedometer, oil pressure, ammeter, water temp. This is the ignition light switch, which is off an MGTC. A lot more simpler than today's racing cars. <laughs> oh, very simple. With all the buttons and stuff that oh, they have. Yeah, yeah. I keep saying I, I'm tempted to take a ping pong paddle, drill a hole in it, and put it here and see. I've got a new paddle shifter. <laughs> hey, what do you say? Well, this has been absolutely brilliant, Patrick. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Appreciate it. It's cosmic, folks. This one goes out to Heidi, by request. She wants to be able to see the picture. Everybody, so here at Wheels Across the Pond, there's awesome, amazing European classics, but as well as cars, we have some bikes. And not just motorbikes, there's even a cycle down there. So I, saw, so I do have to go back to that one. It's super neat. But hey, guys, love you guys. Look at the way you're sitting. Introduce yourself, please. I'm John from Hope Sound. This is my 1972 BSA 650 Lightning. It's a British motorcycle. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. And how long have you had it for? I've had it for about 15 years now. 15 years. Did you bring it here from England? Yeah, I wish I could say I, I brought it from Key, uh, Key West of all places. From Key West. Yes. <laughs> you got to love the keys. Yes, I picked it up there and I live nearby in Hope Sound, Florida. And what is it about the British bikes that you like? I just love the way the engineering is uh, you know, very detailed and uh, I just love that you don't see very many of them anymore. I just love having something a little bit different than everybody else has. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Anytime you've got wheels, you've got to have something that's a little bit different. Gotta be custom and be your own. Yep, that's it. Absolutely love it. And what about your friend here, sir? What have you got? Uh, my name's Bill. I'm from uh, Coral Springs, Florida. And I have a 1968 Matchless G15 CS. Um, when this motorcycle was built, uh, Matchless was actually bankrupt. And uh, the last two years of these bikes were shipped with with either with both matchless badges and Norton badges in the in the crate, they could be sold as either a Norton or a matchless. And it's a hybrid from the factory. It has a Norton motor and Norton wheels and forks, but the rest of the bike is all matchless. And That's matchless was matchless was one of the major brands. Uh, they were part of a group called AMC Associated Motorcycles. And uh, most people in Australia would know Matchless, AJS, Norton, James, Francis Barnett. Those were all AMC brands. Okay. And uh, I got this bike as a complete basket case 10 years ago. Um, I've had it restored. Well, I restored it myself. I even, I even painted this in my backyard. Nice. So you did the restoration yourself. Yes, I did. We love that. Okay. Yeah. Um, absolute basket case, what does that mean? How bad was the condition? It, I was told about this bike and was told it was not worth the $600 that they wanted. That's how bad it was. Wow, okay, so you had your work cut out for you. Yes, but it was a very complete bike. 
Um, over 90% of this bike is original to the bike. Um, most of the rubber bits and the cables and such are new. Um, the only really hard, the, the actual parts I had to get were the front fender and the headlight and the mirror. Almost everything else is original to the bike. And were you, uh, did you have any difficulty finding the parts here in the States? Uh, not too bad. Actually, um, there's a company in uh, Canada called Walridge Motors. They are a great source for hybrids. That's, the, the, that's what these were called. Norton Matchless uh, mix, and then there's a there's a, a company in the Midlands in, in England um, called AMC Classic Spares. I think they're in uh, Leicestershire, and uh, uh, they they're very old fashioned. They go by email. <laughs> you don't text them, so that's not that old fashioned. <laughs> no, no, but but uh, they're. Uh, very nice. It was uh, the, the guy that runs it. His name is uh, Steve Serby, and he is a, just a perfect gentleman. Uh, he's helped me find some really hard to find parts. And I'm guessing you guys have always been bike fans. Of course. Yep. From a very young age. Yes. From a young age, you guys both have been riding because yep. you know how to restore them as well. So yes. where does that come from? Uh, I've always been mechanically inclined. Uh, as a as a very young adult, I worked in a restoration shop restoring classic cars. Okay. And my wife wanted me to uh, actually rebuild a car that I had when we were dating. I had to sell it to buy a house that had a garage. I've heard that story before. <laughs> yeah. So she said, it's a shame you sold your car. You yes. should get another one. And I looked and it was with kids and, and, and her car had to stay in the garage. I thought motorcycles are better. Yes. So I started with the Norton Commando. That, that one's led, yours too? No, no, the Commando belongs to somebody else. But I have, I have a Norton Commando, same color, candy red. And uh, that led to uh, a Norton P11, which is actually the other one on the uh, on on the the brochure, the ad. And that led to this, and then this one led to that one. So, so now it's all about bikes. It's all about bikes, as long as they're red, and they're and they're uh, Norton or Matchless. I have to. Well, you know what? The red does look nice, and you said you did the paint job yourself. Yes. Does that include the pinstriping? Yeah, actually, this is it's a silver base coat, and I just masked off the silver, oh. sprayed the red candy over it, and then peeled the tape. That's pretty smart. You've had a lot of work hours in that. <laughs> yeah, it, it worked out fantastically. Now, if you had the space, and I think you all can relate to this, that if you had the space, such a lovely wife to let you tell you to go get the car of your dreams that might have led to having a few classic cars as opposed to bikes yes but space limited you motorbikes are still just as good yeah and we've had uh, i and for some reason my wife likes english cars we actually had a, a, a rover 825 that's the one that's based on the honda legend uh, we had two again, minis, want to thank our sponsors including a Mini Cooper Coupe, the, yeah, the little chop top two seater. Yes. <laughs> uh, but now performance. with grandchildren, she needed a car with four doors, so we have now have an Alfa Julia. Nice. Very nice. She does like her European classics. She likes she likes her European cars. This has been absolutely wonderful. Well, I appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you.